All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Um, I'm Jill, your English coach. This is class six of Intermediate Grammar One. Um, if you've missed previous classes, um, I encourage you to go back in our calendar and review starting from the, the, the beginning of May. So you could get classes one, two, three, four, and five that kind of lead up to this. Okay. Um, so just in summary, what we've been looking at, what we have already covered so far, um, we've done some present tense, present progressive. We looked at how to form questions in those, um, both of those uh, tenses. We have done a little bit of writing practice. And today we're gonna take a look at some of the irregular verbs um, using the base form of the verb, past tense, and then the past participle. So we'll practice, this will be just kind of a brief practice, okay? And then we're going to take a look at a couple of pages in the book. I've got them just kind of written down for my, uh, so I can remember what we're, our plan is for the day. And so by the end of class, you should begin to feel, or you should feel more comfortable um, knowing the difference or when to use um, past tense and in a simple form, simple past tense, um, even some of the irregular. So I've got like 10 or 12 of the most common irregular verbs. If you guys remember, I did show you the full complete list of um, irregular verbs in the past tense. So the goal of that is just really to review and commit to memory or to memorize those, okay? And um, there's probably no better way to do it than to just kind of get in a pattern, you know, like be, was, were, been, and just kind of may maybe make some sort of a, a rhythm or a rhyme with it in your head. Hang on, let me, I've got a heater on in my office today because it's um, Anyways, so figuring out, um, you know, part of learning is, um, learning about how you learn. So what works best for you? Um, some people, you know, I noticed with my own children that, you know, if they're um, listening to something, they will remember it better versus for me, I like to, I like to hear it, but I also like to take notes. Even if I never look back at those notes, I still know that I have those notes and that I can reference them. So it kind of alleviates a little bit of stress or anxiety because I, I say, oh gosh, how am I going to remember all of this? Well, I took the notes and I can always go back and look at those notes. And the funny thing is, is many times I don't even go back and look at those notes, right? So learning a new skill like English or running or fixing cars, you know, any new skill requires a number of things. You know, it's repetition, it's your commitment, it's practice, it's thinking about it and researching it. And then um, at the kind of meta, more meta level, you know, you've got these other things where you're also in the process of whatever skill you are learning, you are also learning about yourself and how you learn. And so there, yeah, I'll tell you a story. My son, He's probably listening to me right now, but um, he is taking a, an upper level math class right now. And his comment to me was, I don't even know why I need to learn this. You know, it's not going to apply to my life at all. And he's possibly true. It's possibly true. He may not ever apply um, algebra two into his life. It, it might not be relevant. But what there is value, and this is what I told my son, was there is value in learning about learning. So, you know, recognizing, you know, you, you're learning something, you're, you're reading about it, and you get to a point and you say, I'm stuck, okay? What do you do in that moment? You know, when do you take, wh what do you do? Do you reach out to a person for help? Do you go to your computer and you Google, you know, uh, what's the angle ABC? <laughs> you know, what what are the steps that you take when you are stuck? Um, and so that's a really valuable 
um, thing. And, you know, luckily now we live in an age of technology and access to tons and infinite amount of information at all times. And so we do, we're lucky, you know, we have the opportunity to figure those things out very, very quickly. What makes me learn quickly? Do I, am I an auditory listener or a learner where I have to say something? Am I the type of person who um, needs to be shown how to do something? Uh, so for example, here's another example. Um, my family and I, we often play card games or board games, right? You know, the big boards that you put on your table and you play a game, You maybe you roll dice. And the first time that I go to play that game, I have a very difficult time because I can pull out the directions and the instructions for the game and read it. And it just does not make sense to me. I cannot read for information um, unless I'm looking for something specific, which in the case of a game, it's not a specific thing. You need to fully understand all of it. So that is something that I know about myself. What I do, what I have done recent in recent years is um, I hand the instructions to my husband. He reads it and then tells me how to play. And then I still don't usually get it very quickly. I have to watch it happen one or two times before I understand the game. I understand the strategy. I understand how to win. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of a competitive person. so. Um, all of this to, is to say that um, whether or not, you know, you like the topic we're learning today or you don't like the topic or maybe, um, you know, this, in the case of my son, he says to himself, Algebra 2 is just not going to be something that I am going to need in my future. Um, but what he's doing is learning how to learn and learning what to do when he gets stuck. Um, and both of those things, I, uh, you know, I'm a teacher, obviously, but I'm a very big proponent of um, learning how to build my stamina, stamina, um, building stamina around things that are difficult. Um, I mean, really helps you in all areas of your life, whether it's in relationships or learning or, you know, achieve setting and achieving goals, you know, in your job. You know, building up stamina for when things get difficult um, will always help and benefit your life. So there's my two cents for the day. <laughs> um, that's my little pep talk. So let's jump in and see. Um, let's see how much of this you guys already know. Um, remember, you can always come to the live classes. These are um, since there's, you know, we, we're doing these classes and people are allowed to sign up and to um, come on live. Um, I would love to have you guys here. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's do this. So um, I would like to, so I've got the three columns and we're gonna fill in all of the blanks. So we have a blank here and we have a blank here. What we do have is the past tense form. So we have to use that to kind of go backwards and find out what's the main verb. Okay, so the past tense of this verb is was, were, the verb is to be, okay? The copula, okay? That's the past tense. So I was happy, she was tired, we were there, okay? Those are just very simple sentences for you. Okay, and then the past participle of the verb to be, when you, so the past participle we use in a couple of places, Specifically and most commonly, we use it in the perfect present perfect tense. So think about this. Um, if I'm going to use this verb, this be, um, I have been in Montana for four years. Okay. I have been. So this is your main verb, and then this is the auxiliary or helping verb, okay? So, and then what we call this, it's the main verb, but it's in that participle form. So we're gonna put been here. And it's not been, okay? Maybe 
Um, other forms of English um, might pronounce this more like bean. Um, in the United States and Canada, we say bin, bin, almost like eh. Okay, but it does vary. So kind of keep an eye on that. If you you know work with people from other parts of the world that speak other um, accents of English or other forms of English, just understand that that would might be pronounced a little differently. Um, okay, so the next one we only have this participle. So the past participle is done. Let's go back to the main verb. So what's the main verb of this? It's do, okay? And the past tense of do is did. Perfect, all right? You see what we're doing now? If you'd like, you guys, you could take a moment and just pause the video and start to fill this in on your own. So go ahead and pause now if you'd like to do that. If you're sticking with me, let's keep going. If you just came back, good for you. Let's see how you did, okay? Um, come, the past tense is came, okay? He came to work on time. And then the past participle, so if we have, I have come, okay? I have come, I have come, okay? Um, and you know, I, another, you know, level of commitment to this class or to your English goals would, it would be great if you guys were to buy this book. Um, I do not get any money from this company or anything like that. It's just, it's a book that I really love. Um, and I've been using it for a long time. So I would be, I'm happy to support them. <laughs> um, and you know, there's a lot of really great exercises. They make the activity is really accessible. And the great thing is, is if you have questions about things, there's like an answer part in the back. So you can always check your answers, you know, if you're studying on your own. Okay. And I know that that's pretty important to a lot of people. So, um, okay. Okay. So I have come, we've done that. Now this next one, the past tense we have said, remember the pronunciation of this sounds like this, eh, said. And if you guys have not been studying my or coming to my pronunciation class, you should also come to that. I think that is like the pinnacle class for learning. Meaning, it, you know, many people just struggle with pronunciation and fluency and then end up having questions about it and then not feeling comfortable asking them because they're in situations where they're already speaking English. So that's where you in that class is actually where we get to really get good at um, identifying what we're not good at, what we what we need to know and what we what we don't know and what we need to know. OK, to sound fluent and to sound more confident and to feel a sense of calm in your body when you're speaking English versus feeling nervous. OK. All right. So let's go backwards. So we've got the past tense here. The verb is say good work and then the past participle i have said it a million times okay sometimes i have to put it into a sentence in my brain to make sure that it makes sense um so it's it's kind of difficult what, what i'm saying is it sometimes can be difficult to be like what's the past participle of the verb no and i'm like wait 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 um uh and then you have to put it in the sentence right i have known Right, so if the past participle for the word no is known, I have known this for many years, okay? And the past tense for no is new, new. I know, English is crazy. Okay, past participle, we've got sat. Maybe we can work backwards. Let's go back to the verb. What is the verb here? To sit, right? I sit in the first row every day. Yesterday, I sat in the back of the class and I have sat in this seat for 10 years, okay? Um, okay, let's see. So we've got the past participle gotten, gotten. Now, um, I like to mix in a little bit of pronunciation when we're, we're doing some of these things um, because I think personally that's how pronunciation should be taught. It should it should be taught explicitly and um, implicitly. So meaning 
I'm in, I'm putting it, I'm inserting a little bit into our grammar class, but I also think that plus a, a specified or specific course is super important. So what's happening here, listen to me pronounce this word, gotten, gotten. You're not even hearing those double T's, are you? No. Here's another example where you're gonna have two double T's in the, in the middle, but listen to the pronunciation of this, butter. Butter, duh, duh. You're hearing a D here. Isn't that crazy? However, here you've got gotten, and th that, that T sound is just completely gone. Now, this is American English, North American English. Um, so in other Englishes, you would hear gotten. And to me, that sounds very formal. Um, so the way that this word is said in North American English is gotten, gotten. Um, okay, so the verb, the, the main verb of this is get, right? And the past tense of get is got. Okay, we are getting there. See, getting? <laughs> oh, I hope you guys get my jokes because otherwise it's just all for nothing. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. So we have the main verb to start here. We have the verb have in the past tense, had right? And this is, so just being clear here, this is not, this is the main verb, right? So the verb is to be, to do, to come, to have. Okay, so we have, I have um, two cars. I had a Volkswagen. I have, so I have, I just stopped. I just stopped myself and I put myself into, I put this word or that verb into this form in my head so that I could do this for you. So just so you know, that's, you know, for a native speaker, you sometimes have to stop and think, wait, 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 what is that? Okay. So don't feel bad if this takes a little bit of time. We're going to practice this perfect tense with these participles in upcoming classes. So don't worry, we will get there. Um, just be patient, okay? Uh, I really like to take our time going through these things, especially when I don't have students in the class live with me because when I have students in the class live with me, I can check for your understanding, right? I can listen to you say these words and I can provide feedback. Um, okay, let's move on. So if I put that in this form of a sentence with this verb, I have had, I have had it. Had, I have had it. Um, okay, so we've got here the past tense of get, uh, this verb in the present, it is give. Okay, so I give money to my church. I gave money to my son. And then I have given them a lot of time. I have given, okay? Okay, um, let's see. So we've got just a couple more. Saw is the past tense here. The verb is here. The main verb is see. So see, saw, seen. I have seen that movie before. I have seen that movie before. Okay. No, new, known. We already did that one. Oops, I kind of jumped in front here. Um, so here we've got the participle. So the verb made, okay, go backwards. It's make, right? I make bread in the mornings. In the past tense, yesterday I made bread and I have made many loaves of bread, okay? So kind of keeping in mind when we use that um, that perfect form, or at least start thinking about it, we'll start with, um, we'll actually probably start with that on our in our Tuesday class next week where we start with perfect tenses, okay? But I, you know, if you guys are, you know, B1, B2 students, you've likely done all of this before, uh, but of course, it's always a good idea to review things, right? Okay, we've got a past tense here, thought. What is the verb in the uh, in the main the main form is think. Okay. I think that um winter is fun. I don't know. <laughs> I think winter is fun. 
Um, I yesterday I thought it was going to rain. I thought it was going to rain. Um, and then the participle, I have, I'm putting it in context here. I have thought. I have thought that many times. So as you guys can see so far, there really is no, with these irregular verbs, there really is no pattern, right? So you can you can kind of come up with some sort of a pattern for some of them, like this gotten or been or seen, those kind of have that E-N at the end. But realistically, there is not much of a pattern with this. And so really just taking the time to memorize them um, is going to be the best way to do it. Okay, two more here. No, three more. Um, so we've got the verb mean. So I I mean to have a good day. It's kind of like to try. Um, in the past tense, meant. This is to say I meant to do that or I wanted to do that. And then the past part I have meant, it's meant. It meant, meant, meant. Isn't that kind of a crazy word, huh? Um, let me see if there are other ones here that I kind of want to add to this for you guys. Uh, okay. Um, there's just these two more. If you guys have questions about some of them, I will put this list back on our um, camera so you can, it's in this class as well. Um, and maybe I'll just post this in our app as well so you can kind of collect it from there and maybe download it. Okay, so we've got the past tense here, drove, and then our present tense is drive, right? I drive a silver car. I drove a station wagon to work yesterday. And the past participle would be like, I have driven, driven, okay? I have driven this car for 10 years. Okay, last one, understood. The verb is to understand. And the past tense is under yesterday, I understood what you said. So these two are the same in this in this um, as well. So you have a couple of them, you know, that are the same. Um, you know, so I think it's just like I said, it's really just kind of coming to Coming to terms with the, um, those are the ones that are the same in the past tense and the participle. Um, and so, you know, maybe you start like that. So, you know, another way to kind of take a lot of information and kind of sort through it or organize it is to organize it. So maybe you go through this big long list. All of these are the irregular verbs in the past tense and the participle, you know, make it, and it continues onto this, onto the next page. So you've got all of this. This is probably, what is it? 10, 20, 30, 40, 120. There's probably like 150 of these verbs here, you know, so maybe you start to separate it and you get a copy of this list. You print it on your printer or someplace and you start checking it off. Yep. I know this one. I know this one. I know this one. And just maybe take a month to do it, you know? So don't let yourself feel overwhelmed with that amount of information because there's no point in feeling overwhelmed. You will get it. It might take time, but you will get it. Um, okay, I've had so many pep talks for you guys today. All right, let's see. Um, I, let's see. Next on our list, I wanted to, well, let me give you this irregular verbs list again. And then let's do a couple of exercises together at the desk. Um, and then I'll give you a little bit of homework to work on outside of class. Okay, here's that list. So you guys can take a look at this list. So I don't know that I can fit all of it on there. So that is the top part. Okay, and let me scoot. So take a screenshot of that. And then a screenshot of this. Again, if you guys order these books, this would be just, you don't even have to do this. But I don't know how much this book is, so. But I think there is value, as I've said, in having um, a, a supporting, you know, book for the class. So, okay. So ending there. All right. Okay. 
So let's go back. We are going to, now that you guys have that, just throw that down. All right, let's take a look and see. I'm going to have you guys do this. is going to be your homework. So I would always love your comments. If you have things that you want to learn that we're not learning in this class or questions, and you're watching this on the video, you can always comment um, in on the video, and I can answer it. Um, all right, let's take a look here. So let me get this all angled ready. Okay, so we're going to look, um, you guys, I gave you this in the last class. So let's just correct the work here together. So it says to complete the biography of American poet Emily Dickinson, use the symbol past form of the verbs in parentheses. Okay, see appendix one on page 453 to help with irregular verbs. So again, if you have the book, you could do this, but it's okay. We can do this together. So don't, you don't have to buy the book. I just... Personally, if you're, if it's like, if you missed a class and, you know, you wanted to come back and do some extra work, of course, you know, then it's easier to do that, right? Okay, so Emily Dickinson, one of the most fav uh, famous American poets, lived from or 1830 to 1886. So notice how I said those words, too. I said 18 and then 30. So I said this number and then this word, and we do that um, with with all of them too. Even you know when we're saying this year, we say twenty twenty three. Okay. So, okay. Her favorite topics were nature, time, and human emotions. They are giving you the verb down below. Okay. Um, so Dickinson, that's her last name, led an unusual life. So the past tense of to lead is led. Same spelling, different pronunciation. So lead, present, and lead, excuse me, led is in the past. So the same as read in the present tense, and in the past is read. Okay. Um, during the 1860s, that's how we'd say that. So we say 1860s with a, a, a plural at the end, 1860s, she, so in the past became, hopefully you can read my, my cursive writing, right? So this is how it, it is in print. And if you practice cursive in English, it's like that, um, I think all languages have a script like that, but it's funny because now kids are not being taught this. And so some of my children, I have three children, some of them cannot read this. So it's kind of sad. And I hope that's not happening in your languages. Um, yeah, so we call that um, cursive. Okay, she almost never blank her house left so this is all in the past tense in amherst massachusetts and she only wore past tense that's irregular she only wore white so all of these have been irregular verbs here okay dickinson allowed very few people to visit her but she had in the past past tense a lot of friends, and she wrote them many letters, okay? All right, let's look at the second section here where we're looking at, uh, we've got 12 of these. It says, complete the list of facts about Emily Dickinson. Use the simple past form of the verbs in parentheses. See Appendix 1 on page 453 with for the irregular verbs. That's the list that I just gave you, that huge list. So if you wanted to take a minute and just do this and maybe take, if you took a screenshot of that, um, you can use that to help you with this. But, um, so if you wanna do that, pause and do that now. Okay, if we're continuing or if you're back now, great. Let's, let's check your work if you did that. Okay, so Dickinson wasn't only interested in poetry. So you can see that they had two things here, they gave us the verb and then they told us it was negative. She also liked, so past tense, she also liked science. 
She used topics from science in many of her poems. She never went, past tense for go is went, far from home, but she knew many people. Dickinson didn't only, didn't write, didn't <laughs> write only poetry. She sent her friends and admirers hundreds of letters. Her letters were full of jokes, recipes, cartoons, and poems, but she didn't address. So your address can be a noun and it can be a verb, right? So the number on the front of your house, we call your address. But when you say you address somebody, the word can be used in many ways. So in this case, they're saying she didn't address the envelopes, meaning she did not put the address on the envelope. You can also say the word to address somebody is to speak to them in a formal way or to pay attention to an issue. She didn't address the issue. It's a, it's a formal way of saying that. Um, but she didn't, in this case, it's talking, she didn't write the address on there. So she didn't address the envelope. Other people did that for her. She must have been very popular. <laughs> Dickinson, Dickinson didn't own a typewriter. She wrote the first drafts of her poems on the back of old grocery lists. Okay, so she liked to reuse her materials. During her lifetime, seven of her 1700 poems appeared, so that's in the past, in print. She didn't know about this and no one asked her permission. She didn't know about it and no one asked, asked her opinion. Okay, one thing I would like to quickly address here, um, and let me just flip this over and do this here together. So we had some verbs like liked, asked, let's see, I'm trying to think of some variety here. We had some other ones like, what did we just talk about? Um, used to, used, wrote. Okay. So when you have those ED tenses, so the regular ones, we have three ways to pronounce the final, the ED. Okay. We have three ways to pronounce the ED sound. Okay. Here's some examples. So we've got these words liked, asked, and looked. So what you're hearing is liked, liked. So we're not like, it's not like it. It looks like, with my eyes, it looks like it should be pronounced like it. It's liked, liked. Asked, this one is tricky. Actually, this the pronunciation on this is asked. Okay, asked. So this is difficult because you've got, okay, lots of people make mistakes with this. So what typically happens for a native speaker is they just say, I asked him, I asked him, okay? That's what they're saying, okay? You're going to practice saying asked, asked. It's not easy, but you have to do it. <laughs> um, and then looked. Okay, and again, Coming from the sound k, which is in the back of your throat, to the front of your mouth, which is where t, t, t comes from right here, t, t, is not easy. So you have to pronounce or practice that. But what I wanted to point out to you is the pronunciation of all of these here is the T sound, okay? Now let's go on. Actually, I wanna jump down, to, down here. So we've got played, played. Okay, it's not played, it's played. Um, we've got this one judged, judged. So uh, this is how you do the j sound, uh. 
sorry, this one got a little messy. Judged, judged. So this is the j, j, and the uh sound. J, uh, j, d, judged, judged. So it's not judged, it's judged. So you're going right from this j, that's the j sound in this here. Well, here you've got the dg and a j, so this is dg. Okay. J, J. So those two are the same sound, judged. And what I'm showing you here is that sound is a D, judged. Okay. Now we've got one more way that we pronounce this. So we've got wanted and needed. Wanted, wa, untid. That's your pronunciation. Wanted. Okay. Me did. N e did i did. So here we actually do pronounce the id, a small reduced sound for the e here and then d. So it's the pronunciation of this is id. So we have three ways that we pronounce in the past tense. The past tense, um, the phoneme for the past tense, which is. ED, okay? The ED here is pronounced either like T, ID, or D. Now, the next question is, how do we know? How do I know which way it is pronounced? So the simple answer is, this is simple. The wanted and needed, when the verb ends, here's your, I'm gonna write it in. This is the rule. When the verb ends with T or D sound, we use id, okay? Here's the other rule. When the verb ends with a voiced, sound, I'll tell you what that is in just a second, we use, oh my goodness, my handwriting is getting bad, we use the D sound, okay, and the rule up here, rule is when the verb ends with a voiceless sound, I'll tell you that in a second, we use T. Okay, now the last question that I'm going to answer then is voiceless or voiced. What does that mean? The best way that you can tell if something is voiceless or voiced is by placing your hand on your throat and saying the sound. So going here to this A, this is the final sound in the verb, play you can feel a the uh, the vibration here a so that means it's voiced so you need a voiced sound a d is a voice d d d it's voiced so you have to match it if it's a voiced ending play you have to have a voiced ending sound played okay if you look up here like the end sound for the word, the verb like is a K. It's, there's no vibration. T, 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 no vibration, okay? So you match that. Voiceless goes with voiceless. Voiced goes with voiced. Ah, liked, liked, asked, k, t, k, t, looked, okay? We'll practice that a little bit more, and of course, we're going to dive more into that in our pronunciation and fluency class. So let's be done for today. I would like for you guys to work on this at home. So, so you're gonna you're gonna take the base form of the verb and you're gonna put it in the simple past tense. Really easy. If you need to look it up, you can reference that other page that I gave you with all of the irregulars. Okay. All right, so take a screenshot of that before I take it away. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, let's see.
Where are you? Okay, let's see. All right. Um, that's it for today. We will see you. I will see you on Tuesday for class seven. So next week is our final week of um, intermediate grammar one. And then we move in June to intermediate grammar two.